Hi everyone, thank you so much Daria for the introductions. Um, so as you mentioned, we're going to be doing a case study today for a pedestrian and traffic simulation that we did for a new parking lot that's to be designed at one of Tungela's mining operations. So it's myself, Jakobin Fosler from Jakobin Consulting and Maketla Nkosi from Tungela. So our presentation today will consist of the following. We're going to do a quick introduction about the company and a bit of background about the project. And we're going to talk about the final parking layout within which we landed on, just so that everybody can orientate themselves on the screenshots and the descriptions that we'll be showing. I'll be talking about the need for simulation with a specific application about uh, this project. Um, what was the needs and what was the requirements for simulation? And then we're going to talk about why we chose any logic to do this um, specific project. Um, there's a short model demo when I'm going to be demoing the single run functionality. So where you run the model with animation um, and see the 3D and statistics, et cetera. And then we're going to look at the sensitivity analysis, which is really key for this project. Now, if you have attended Benjamin Schumann's workshop about an hour or so ago, um, I'll be highlighting some of the things that he discussed and showing why they are so crucial when you get to a real life project like this one and how we've managed to benefit from good model architecture in terms of splitting up your data model logic and animation and we're going to have a brief look at the results for this project and then there'll be some time for q a so i'm going to hand over to maketla who's going to be talking about the company and project background um good day um as uh, Jakob has said my name is maketla Gosi. i am the project um, studies manager for tunela resources so just a brief, brief background in the company um, Tumela is a um, leading South African export of uh, thermal coal. So the company was formed uh, out of the teenager from um, Anglo-American. Previously, we were known as um, Anglo Coal South Africa. So Tumela has a number of uh, operations in uh, South Africa. And then the one that we used uh, for this project, we used the Quazella um, operation, which is an open pit operation and then it also has a processing plant. In Quazella, we have uh, approximately about um, 1,200 employees, 90% um, of which uses their own evaders to come to this, to come to site. And then we also run um, a clean shift system where we have approximately 300 people per shift. And then um, half of those people, they work in the mine, in the pit, which is um, far away from the access um, from the entrance, and then they will require a shuttle service. Next slide, Dr. Ben. Um, in terms of this project, as I've mentioned that we are running um, an open pit, which which has a, a plant. Um, uh, we had uh, some challenges in terms of the infrastructure or parking infrastructure for the plant, and then that resulted in a poor control and management of uh, vehicles, people, and goods that are coming to the complex. And then that exposes us to um, some risk of wanted, unwanted um, criminal elements entering the mine, and also a significant increase in terms of um, the theft of uh, property, company property, and the liability in terms of uh, due to uh, possible damage to company assets, as we have private vehicles driving through the mine and then to deliver people, I mean, to drop off people or to deliver goods. So um, for, as part of this project, we needed to um, um, establish a new, I mean, to upgrade the facility so that we can have, um, we can construct a new and secure parking facility for our employees, where we will have everyone parking outside and then only uh, only walk-ins, and then from the walk-ins, people will be able to get into a shuttle service that will take them to uh, the different areas where they work. And then we also wanted to institute 100% um, um, alcohol testing as people enter the site. And then we also <coughs> uh, needed to um, do an upgrade to the current security building, and then also to make sure that we use the latest technology as part of that, and then to, yeah. And then as, as we seek to do this upgrade, um, there was a need for us to confirm the size of the parking so that we don't under design or over design in terms of the parking size. And then we also needed to 
um, um, analyze the flow of pedestrians um, to uh, our facility to make sure that we create something that's adequate. And then also needed to make sure that we have, we don't create a bottleneck um, in the entrance by having less or inadequate number of tenstiles and pump gates that will be required. And then as you will see later that um, <coughs> we also connect to a public road. Next slide. So after um, looking and then and the extensive deliberation, we uh, we landed in this uh, um, optimal uh, layout, where as you can see the access road uh, that you see that's marked in yellow, it's from a public road, and then you will have with a dedicated uh, road um, or access uh, road for buses and taxis, where we will have the drop off, and then as they come in, it's a one way, and then they. Ten, and then we created a, a sufficient turning cycle for buses to turn, and then it's the same route that we use for delivery trucks, and then they drop uh, drop off employees, and then they exit in the same way. Next, and then um, this is um, where we have we decided to have uh, two boom gates uh, entrance entry gates uh, for uh, employees that are coming to the parking. Um, we have two gates that we'll be using to enter the, the, park, the parking area. Um, there's, uh, <clears throat> however, yeah, there's one in the eastern side and one uh, further down. And then, uh, but we only have one exit area so that you can be able to manage the, ent the entrance and the, uh, the movement in, in the parking area. Okay. So, yeah, then we'll have, um, uh, a main gate where we we'll do 100% um, alcohol testing. And then from there, because we've got two sets of employees that are coming in, the ones that are, are coming in in their own vehicles, which makes up um, something like 70% uh, of the employees, and then also have employees that are coming in Texas and buses. So we'll have two sets of um, home gates or 10 styles, uh, sorry, 10 styles. And then one for jump and go, and then another one for the people that here will be exiting from the parking. And then we also make sure that we also have a self-testing unit um, for employees to test themselves before they go uh, for alcohol, before they can go to the 10 stars. Excellent, thank you, Moketla. Um, and so just to highlight again, this is the final parking layout that we had. This is actually about the third or fourth design. Um, and the simulation actually provided a number of insights during the initial designs. Uh, which prompted us to change the design. So for example, in the beginning, we had an additional um, turn, set of turnstiles here where people coming from the drop and go area would first enter into the parking area. And then the drop and go employees together with the parking lot employees will all enter the mine through the same set of turnstiles. So we would aggregate the number of turnstiles here. Uh, the problem with that is that the overall number of turnstiles then increased because we'd have turnstiles where the drop and go employees would enter the parking lot as well. So we were wondering whether testing it to have a separate entry point for the drop and go employees into the mine and a separate entry point for employees entering through the parking area would actually um, you know, be efficient and reduce the total number of, of turnstiles. So with that layout um, sorted out and the big question of whether this would be sufficient and the previous designs, what would be the impact, et cetera, let's move over to the need for simulation. Now, Typically, when we get to this part of a presentation, whether it's at a conference or to a client, I usually do some high level um, spiel of what's the benefits of simulation, like you can uh, able to provide a safe alternative way to easily make changes, which otherwise in the real world would be costly or time consuming, and you're able to get fast feedback. Now for this table, I'm gonna complete it using the very specific needs of this project. Why it had this need and what's the benefit of using simulation to answer this question. So the first one was that we needed to measure the waiting times of not only the vehicles, but also the pedestrians at those entrance points, when the vehicles and pedestrians are entering as well as exiting. And the reason for this is that we wanna prevent congestion and ensure a high employee morale. And so it's not negatively impacted by this change that so having the parking lot um, everybody parking outside of the operations. 
Now, the big benefit of simulation is that you are able to adequately analyze these dynamic events, events as the queue changes, as the number of people inside the queue increase or decrease, and you can measure the impact of the changes that you're making. So add in a boom gate, remove a boom gate, add a turnstile, increase the number of employees, et cetera. If you were to just do this in real life, even if you had some small scale setup that you could test, it'll be very time consuming and very difficult. You know, you give every person a stopwatch, they need to time themselves, use um, some external people to record, et cetera. So that's really a key benefit of why we had to use simulation here. Now, another big reason is that it's very cost effective to test the impact of design changes. So making changes to the facility after it's been designed or even during the design phase can, can incur significant cost, right? Because there's uh, the civil engineers that need to make new um, assessments of these changes. What's the impact on the paving of the tar road, the um, surrounding facilities in terms of security, lighting, et cetera. Whereas in the simulation model, I could very easily change the number of parkings, move some entrances and exits around and just hit the play button again. So that's why the simulation provided a very low cost way to test our changes and get fast feedback on what the impact of these changes would be on these key parameter or key KPIs that we wanted to measure. So the other big benefit is that we needed a range of likely outcomes for different demand patterns because the facility needs to cater for future demand as the mine expands. Right? Currently, there is maybe three or 400 employees arriving at a specific time. In the future, it might be four or 500. So with a simulation, I could very easily range the number of employees arriving from, let's say, 100 to 1,000 and show what's the impact on queuing times and waiting times, um, on shuttle utilization, et cetera. So it's very easy and you can efficiently vary your input parameters and provide the results. And I'll show an example of that when we get to the sensitivity analysis. So we could also test the impact on traffic flow for different design options. And this is why because there was multiple facility design options and we needed to evaluate based on the congestion of the cars. And the benefit is that we could relatively easily update our parking entrance layout and measure traffic density using the AnyLogic uh, road traffic library. And this also uh, is also the case for the pedestrian uh, library. We could also measure the pedestrian density. So another key need that you have is that you need to incorporate various system interdependencies. So we've got not only the, the buses arriving and taxis arriving and cars arriving, but we also have the shuttle service inside the mine and how they collect and deliver employees to and from the mine actually impacts how employees will be arriving when they get to the main gate. If they're all delivered in a batch out of the shuttle, they will all be arriving at the gate in a batch as well. So you need to be able to test the various modes of transport, the internal shuttle services, et cetera. And simulation is really the only tool where you can consider all of these constraints. Um, and an initial idea was to use just traditional queuing theory. But if you think about the numerous amount of, of interdependencies the system has, it will be uh, near impossible to do. So let's talk about the benefits of using um, any logic. So biggest benefit for me is the standard road traffic and pedestrian library. So you can see from the little picture there at the top where I'm showing the traffic density map, we could at uh, a glance see exactly where we're getting the most traffic um, adjust the designs accordingly if possible or just note that that's going to be the case. So the great thing about using the library is not just that you get these standard analysis options available, but there's also standard pedestrian and vehicle movement behavior. Where if you had to use some agent-based model and you want to do it yourself, it would have been a lot of work to code the logic inside pedestrians moving around or vehicles moving around. So that, that's really, really a key feature which enabled us to give uh, results very quickly in the project. <clears throat> the next one is the seamless integration of these libraries with standard functionality, standard events, select outputs, the process modeling library, etc. So this really helps you to use your standard simulation functionality with any one of those libraries and both those libraries can interact with each other as well because all your cards and your pedestrians are just agents. So on the next screenshot there you can see that I've got the pedestrian heat map um, activated and we can see where all the people are getting out and getting onto the walkway. You can see as it goes from blue to green how people are accumulating because the paths, the walkways are um, joining. So um, we can see where you're getting the most um, traffic in terms of your pedestrians. We can see at the bus drop-off, there's obviously a lot of traffic. And then on their side of the entrance gate, 
So with this, you can immediately see the flow of the pedestrians. You can see where potential bottlenecks are. Where should you test some more sensitivity analysis in terms of increasing the decreasing the number of turnstiles and changing the walkways um, to um, join in a different way so that you don't get congestion on the walkways, etc. And then one of the biggest benefits for me of any logic that we've always used in the past is the ability to export your model as a standalone application for testing and analysis by the clients as well. So you can easily just export the model, tell them to run it a couple of, uh, of times, view it, make sure that the logic is behaving accordingly. Okay, so with that, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you a quick demo of our single run functionality and, and making a note of what uh, Benjamin Schumann showed previously. You'll see that in our models and in, in my models, it's, there's always a clear distinction between the input data then we've got the data model, and then you've got the logic part of your model. So this is just a single run functionality. So it's just a single run with animation. You'll see that everything is imported from this scenario file, which um, helps you to manage your scenarios. It contains everything from the model setup, all the general parameters that we've got in, the vehicle parameters, speeds, acceleration, the arrival schedule of your vehicle types with the number of employees inside of them, et cetera. And all of this I import into the AnyLogic database, and then everything is data driven from there. So nothing is hard coded in any way. Um, you can see the cars arriving on the public road. There's a bus um, arriving. We've got lots of people queuing there at the turnstiles at the top. If we switch on our traffic density map, even though the model has just been running for a few hours, in reality, you can see the traffic already. So a number of people leaving now, all arriving at different shift times, etc. There was a couple of nice 3D views, don't add a lot of an analysis value, but it helps with the verification and validation. You can see cars arriving there at the entry gate. Here's the turnstiles. You'll see some employees queuing up at the turnstiles now, um, and then leading towards the plant side. We've also got a view of the exit boom gates. You'll see as cars are starting to leave now, there's some congestion there because we've got two entry gates um, and one of the exit gates takes more traffic than the other. So there's also a number of statistics here on the right-hand side for the time in the entry queues, exit queues, either for pedestrians or for the vehicles. So we could evaluate what the average waiting time, minimum and maximum waiting time would be for the different employees. When the model is finished running, you are able to download the results. It's a simple zip file and we use text files for this because it's thread safe um, and you can use it when you're running multiple experiments and you just simply open it in Excel and then you're able to view your data and analyze it for this single run. So in this single run, we had the likely values of what we assume people will be arriving at, at the rates, et cetera, as well as the um, delay times for opening a turnstile, opening a boom gate, et cetera. So this is really hard because the question is, how long would people wait at the turnstile? And you're like, how many turnstiles do you need? We don't know, we need to test that. But we also don't know exactly what the final delay of a turnstile would be, right? Because it's going to be new equipment that we're going to be getting from a supplier. So we don't know. It might be five minutes or five seconds to open the turnstile from when an employee swipes their card. It might be 10 seconds. It might be 15 seconds, right? So that made it really hard. And so in the end, what I decided to do was to create a sensitivity analysis functionality. Now, due to the nice model structure of completely separating your data object your input data, et cetera, I could create data objects on the fly with code and change specific parameters, give these data objects to um, replicated model objects and have all of them execute in separate multi-threaded environment so that I could analyze all of these parameters in a single go. So you'll see here in the sensitivity analysis, we were able to analyze all of these parameters in one, at once. So we set the number of days, so 30, that's essentially like 30 replications because every day has a different start and end time. You set the number of employees, minimum, maximum, step factor, shuttle capacities, everything, turnstile delays, like I mentioned, there's, you can see there's five seconds, uh, up to 15 seconds in steps of five. And now the model would create a massive number of experiments as you will see now, because for every set of parameters, it's a new experiment that needs to be created. And now all of them, as soon as it starts setting it up, starts executing in the background, runs each of them for about uh, for 30 days. And now I've obviously fast forwarded quite a bit. 
and now you are able to um, to download all of these results. There's a detailed results as well as the summary of the results. And just to show you how easy it is to analyze it, if you've set up your model like this, I can now choose any one of these um, output files, employee waiting, shuttle waiting, or vehicle waiting. Um, and I'm gonna take the shuttle waiting times. And you just put in a little pivot table, to say like, what's the two things I wanna compare? Number of shuttles versus their capacity uh, versus the number of employees arriving. And then you've got a little chart. And super easy. So if there was a change in the layout of, of the, of the um, parking area, that obviously unfortunately takes a bit of time because you need to do it manually, move things around, reconnect some parts, reconnect some roads if that's needed. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a big change, then I need to reconfigure the logic of how pedestrians choose as paths uh, to get to the end gate. And then you just run the sensitivity analysis again and you can see exactly what's the impact of the number of employees versus the number of shuttles versus the number of then styles, et cetera. So we move over now to the results page. I'm gonna show you some of the charts that we created. There's quite a few of them, so I'm only gonna show a few. But all of our results use the sensitivity analysis because we needed this range of outcomes. We needed to make an informed decision about what's the maximum, what's the average um, for entering and exiting all vehicles and pedestrians at all the different gates. So here's one, for example, where you said, what's the maximum waiting time at the gate stop if you only have one shuttle? Now you've got a choice in shuttle capacity. Are you gonna do a 22 seater or a 36 seater um, shuttle? And what if the number of employees arriving at the same time, right, for a specific shift was 25, 50, 75, and 100? How long would it wait? Okay, about 30 minutes maximum waiting time if you've got a 36 seater shuttle, and 50 minutes waiting time if you've only got this one shuttle and 22. So immediately in this one graph, you pretty much answer all the questions about what shuttle capacity, what number of employees you can cater for, and how long would they wait. And we did this for two shuttles and at the um, gate stop and at the mine stop. <coughs> yeah, and the different shuttle capacities, etc. So here's another chart where we're showing the drop and go turnstile. So this is all the people that's arriving and parking on the outside. And what if the maximum waiting time, what's the maximum waiting time? If you had a 10 second entry delay. So there's like five seconds for alcohol testing and five seconds to open up the turns uh, for the turnstile to open and you know, complete its uh, process. And so the next person can swipe. So yeah, the maximum that we assumed based on the employee statistics in terms of when they arrived for shift, it was about um, 60 odd employees that would probably be arriving at the same time. So this is what this green line is indicating. That's the most likely employees that will be arriving with the current setup on the mine. And you can immediately see it with one turnstile, they're gonna wait a considerable amount of time. With two turnstiles, about 250 seconds, three turnstiles, 150 seconds, and four turnstiles. And now the, the project team could make an informed decision and say, okay, how long is acceptable to have employees wait uh, on average, on maximum, et cetera. What I'm showing here is just the maximum time. So this was done for the drop and go parking lots, the different entering and exit delays, different number of turnstiles, as well as for the um, parking lot um, entry as well. So the next one here is for, okay, so this is the parking lot entry, entry time. So you'd see some interesting things here for the drop and go, there was a much bigger deviation between the number of turnstiles for the, for the number of employees versus the parking lot. And what we found is that when people arrive in the parking lot, because they're, they're stopping at different locations inside the parking lot, they sort of automatically funnel to not all arrive at the turnstile at exactly the same time. Whereas if you're a drop and go employee, you're a bus delivering 60 people at once, there's a short distance to the turnstile. So even, do you, even though there is variation in terms of the pedestrian movement, like the speed at which they're traveling, when they arrive there, they're pretty much still a big bunch of you know, 50 to 60 people arriving. Whereas if you've got 50 cars arriving at the same time in the parking lot, they all go and park at different places at different times. So they don't actually arrive all at once at the turnstiles. So you can actually have fewer turnstiles for the same number of people at your parking lot turnstiles versus your drop and go turnstiles. And it's these kinds of insights that you'll never think about and you'll never know if, unless you've ran a simulation model to envision, envision that or to record the statistics. So the last one was the vehicle enter and exit times at the different boom gates. So here I'm just showing the maximum waiting time for vehicles at the entry boom gate if they were arriving at the same time. So we said it would be anything between 30 and 60 uh, employee cars that will be arriving at the same time because of the way that they're coming into the public road and the different shift patterns. 
So in maximum, they will be waiting uh, about 10 minutes. Yeah. If you even have a 10 second boom gate delay, which is quite, quite uh, long, we thought it would probably be closer to five minutes. So this is adequate for the entry boom gate. Unfortunately, on the exit side, it was maximum was up to 20 minutes. And that's because 70% of the cars all go through one of the exit um, gates. Okay, so that is it. I see we are right on time with about five minutes left for questions. A big thank you to Kumaketla for presenting to me, uh, presenting with me. Um, and here's our details. If any of you want to get in contact with us, you can find us on LinkedIn as well. Um, you're also welcome to visit uh, my blog, The Any Logic Modeler, where I share some tips and tricks. Uh, I'll just check if there's any questions in the chat. I see there's quite a few. <clears throat> I'll just start up here at the top. <clears throat> So somebody is asking about the model performance speed um, for the consumer. And I must say that those sensitivity analysis, so the one that I ran now was, uh, was obviously fast forwarded, but you ran the entire range, which was a couple of hundred. And if you ran it for about 30 days, it took about three to four hours. Uh, so my general rule of thumb is if you can run all the analysis that you need to do overnight, then it's, then it's not an issue. What is very, very uh, resource intensive on the machine is the density maps for both the traffic and the pedestrian um, um, library. So for those, I had to switch it off. Else it would have taken maybe, you know, 10, 12, 20 hours to run. Those really are really intensive. Um, and the thing is that you only use it for the visual aspect when looking at the model. So we actually deactivated that for the sensitivity analysis. Um, so there's a question about measuring the waiting times at entry points. Do we use thresholds to trigger various operation modes? Um, so I'm assuming by operation modes, maybe the, the number of turnstiles. I'm not sure, Luis, if you can maybe clarify that, but essentially we ran a full you know, 30 days with just one set of parameters for every experiment that we did. So it was like four turnstiles at this arrival rate. And obviously there's lots of randomness. So we did 30 days after each other and then we use the averages. Um, so we've got a question from Vazu. Uh, do we have predefined demand data? So that's just the thing. We've got like the current employees and through a survey, uh, we know what times they are arriving before they shift, what mode of transport are they using, drop and go, private transport, etc. Um, but that just gave us a single point in time right now. With the question is we need to build this parking lot to last for many, many years, for the life of mine, in fact. And so that's why not simulating a single demand point made, made a lot of sense. You have to simulate a range of arrival patterns. Right? And what if the shift changes in the future? Right? You don't need to rerun the model. We've got the table. You can just literally look it up. And so by providing these tables, you could just look up whatever you wanted to from the results. Um, so question if, if we should increase the number of parking lots or change the number of vehicles as they have no direct correlation. Yes. So currently the parking lot is more than adequate for the maximum number of vehicles um, that in terms of employees, but the remaining is used for if there's deliveries or if there's visitors from outside and they also need to get access to the parking lot because the parking lot's here and we don't want people parking outside. Um, but this is, again, something that we can just add on and add in more uh, parking lots and see the impact of that or just increase the number of cars. <laughs> but, yeah. So it was a question about the results analyzed. Is it based on some generic KPIs? So I think these were just the KPIs that we as a project team decided needed uh, was needed. So that's the average and maximum waiting time. Um, for the different entry and exit points. Right? That's the big thing. We want to make sure that this design does not cause significant congestion and, um, in, and still have adequate flow. And that's really hard. Like what is an adequate waiting time for an employee arriving or even departing or for your vehicles, et cetera. So that was, um, that was really, really hard. Um, but thank you so much. I think we are out of time. Thanks so much for everybody attending. Thanks again to Maketla and the rest of the team. Thanks very much, Jakob Ben. Thanks very much, Michaela. Great presentation. We really appreciate it.